<laughs> it's going down like this, motherfucker. This shit is crazy. The following. <laughs> Nigga get mad. Say, motherfucker. What you mean you ain't gonna let me in this funky joint? Much money I done spent in here, nigga. I knew your mama when she was horn. Hump, baby. <laughs> Shit, bet I'd do it over time time. <laughs> Say that, nigga. Shit. <laughs> bar, back the bar. Off time. <laughs> Shit, bro, I'm trying to make me some money. <laughs> bro, I'm hungry as a hog knee. Slop Jesus. <laughs> Shit, gotta be a Jesus, cause too many black folks. <laughs> For what he has, he for what he has, for what he has, for what he has, he says that the only way that we can uh, solve our problem is to unite together among ourselves, among our own kind, uh, clean ourselves up, rid ourselves of the evils that we've uh, become addicted to here in this society, and try and. I just left the light in this bitch. I'm fitting to hit the shop in this shit. Fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, fuck up. Hey, where are the white women at? I'm trying to tell you just what her man no, her mind is hey, fucked. Where the white it. women at? I'm, I'm trying to told you just with her and many. No, her mind is fucked. God damn it, shit. Her Marcus. mind is fucked. Hey, where the white women at? I'm trying to told you. I'm trying to told you. I'm trying to told you. Yes, he destroy black boys. Yes, he destroy black boys. Yes, he destroy black boys. If you destroy him as a boy, he'll never become a man. Joe Vig, he looked down, seen the feet. The nigga went berserk, killed the monkey, threw the bat out the window, start kicking that bitch in the air. Say anyway, <laughs> but I will. Um, the way quantum entanglement works is that you can take two particles, quantum entangle them, and then take those two particles and move them at any distance in the cosmos. And let's just say, for example, if you quantum entangle two electrons and you have them spinning in the same direction, and then you take one of those electrons and you shoot that thing out a hundred thousand light years from the original. If you then rotate the spin on the one electron, if you, if you modify it so that its spin changes, the quantum entangled electron at any distance will simultaneously in no time switch its rotation also because they're quantum entangled. So these communication systems are taking advantage of this aspect of quantum mechanics that most people can't wrap their heads around, and this is what they're utilizing. It's just the new level of science that affords us the ability to communicate at any distance instantaneously. Can you? You don't understand. It's cool enough just being cool, like I am, chilling. Group of you together, you never can tell who's who. I've seen a lot of black guys, Nipsey, but you're overdoing it. My eye, plus I'm in love with a bitch I can't stand. Philosopher? Yes. You're a philosopher? Yes. You're a philosopher? Yes. I think I think I think very 
Lindsay. I mean, TikTok. A lot of the white content creators on TikTok get all of their dances from the black content creators. I mean, TikTok. A lot of the white content creators on TikTok get all of their dances from the black content creators. Most of them is psychopaths and all that. They'll kill your mama's mama and you decent white folk that still don't know they're racist. What the hell you want here, Hunky? Don't know me why. Don't know me why. Don't know me why. Chinese platform, you already know. The Chinese platform, you already know. They don't give a fuck about show black. I think we OD. I think we OD. I think we OD. Look my word. Can't be my equal. I don't know what you heard. That's the difference when you're. You just snort cocaine. Now I've been for the check. Yeah. I'm a walking dead man is what they call me when I'm coming I hit the loop juice It pulls up in the dirt Baby, I'm a walking dead man is what they call me when I'm I hit the loop juice It pulls up in the dirt Baby, I'm a walking dead man is what they call me when I'm coming I guess you go to the history of European civilizations, 250 years is how long they last before they implode because of their greed, because of their violence, because of an inability to let others be, including themselves. If they, if they didn't have brown and black people to hate, they would hate themselves. Slapping folks is satisfying. She don't like me, but I didn't know. Guess it was underlying. Lean and buck, lean, buck, lean, buck. To the east, to the north, to the west, to the south, above, below, and the middle.
Greetings. This is Big Pontiac. And welcome to the Chocolate Mountain Show. I am the holder of the infinite sacred ball game that was created by the Hero Twins. And I am that one and only Galactic Daddy-O welcoming each and every one of you to my Galactic Patio that reaches from Minnesota to the universe. Uh, I've got a co-host tonight, and my co-host is Buddha the Cat. <laughs> oh, shit. So, uh, if you hear him meowing, it's, oh, look, I thought he had left, so I'm going to leave the door open so he can come and go freely. Because he, he needs vision to leave me the hell alone. <laughs> so tonight, tonight, do do. That's my cousin, so I'm all right. Do do tonight. Do do I'm all right. Do do <laughs> Michael Nida Warden on the motherfuckers tonight. Do do I'm all right. So oh. I'm sorry, I, I'm breaking protocol. We have the best amber in the world. And I've sampled a lot. We have Ellenness Great Lakes. The best ambrosia, so pop them if you got them. So pop them if you got them, if I didn't mention that. And tonight I'm still, oh, see if I, this shit's so sticky. I need to clean this shit. I hit my big bong, goddamn. Mm, this shit is sticky, icky, icky. Ah, I need to clean this shit or something. Give me some alcohol. Rich niggas, whole niggas. Let's see. Maybe I got too much water in this motherfucker. We'll pour it. Oh, pour that shit out. Fix it up for y'all. And so tonight we still doing this supersonic, supersonic motivating rhymes that are creating and everybody knows the big Pontiac is devastating <laughs> so we still got this badass wax there's a couple grams in there it was only about 30 a gram so you know not too bad more expensive than them gummies I, I, I do take I'll say that more expensive than them all right Rich niggas, whole niggas, be, be, this is our year, our year. <laughs> oh. Y'all yeah, don't hear that universal beat. I was trying to give y'all that universal beat. That slave. Boom. That, that, that's to show you that there's other powers in the world. Ah, oh, there he goes. It's open, so you can take your fat ass out. <laughs> I know your ass can open that door. <laughs> He's like, he pawed that in the motherfucking apron. Nigga, take your big fat ass through that door. <laughs> oh, this mug is so funny. And, you know, I I've taken care of him since 2015. I met him in 2013. He was my son's cat. So he's about 10 years old and he kind of likes hanging with me. He'd, he'd sit on me. You know, if I let him, I'd let him, it was an angle. He could jump up on me. He would, he would jump his ass up up here. So not having that tonight. <laughs> you got to make up your mind. You staying in or you staying out? Okay. All right. So, uh, 
letting it percolate, letting it percolate. Um, and this is not very efficient. My big pipe is probably a little more efficient. It's just hard to get the wax at a certain temperature, you know. So I need one of the more expensive things that it do at, you know, get it, get it, get it like that. I don't know. I don't know. And I didn't have a cigar today. So uh, smoke them if you want them. Not really getting a good hit. Well, we'll figure that out. All right, let me see. Try not to knock that motherfucker down. So, what's happening, everybody? Let me see. We got Jamar. What is happening, Jamar? 3224. <laughs> and I know you definitely got. You got to have vision. Dr. Sinister, what is happening? <laughs> He's with his bottom bitch. <laughs> uh, and I'd never have to worry, as he said. My bitches. He said you got you his top bitch. You saying you can't control bitch. your bitches? What? He got his top bitch with him. He's definitely controlling his bitches. El Abaroon Khan, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, James Gann, thank you. Whoops, whoops, whoops. James Gann, thank you for coming. Ah, and B. Brown. Hi, thank you for coming. I appreciate you coming. And I, whoops. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Got to have vision. Oh, there he is, Jeffrey Lane. And I know you got. Got to have vision. <laughs> this mug must have walked out of here. <laughs> Ah, yeah, it's been a fun day. Now y'all know I uh didn't what did I what I I, I talked until about four, three thirty, maybe. I like two and a half hours last night. So I ain't go to bed till four, five ish. No, I don't think I got in bed until six. And then I got up, so I had to order them shoes. You know I had to order the shoes. They'll be in a couple of days. So I had to get up and order the shoes, and I don't think they're gonna sell out. I, I don't know. It was a couple of places that sold out. I think Nike sold out on the Nike. Uh, we can check it out. I think the Nike app. But a couple other places, they had them. So, ah, so and I watched, I listened to the first game while I was sleeping. <laughs> I had a dream, which was so funny. I was dreaming about shoes. And do you know, like, like I, I, I am going to be stereotypical. So African brothers wear them funny shoes with the real long tips. And may, maybe that's out of style now. But a few years ago, they was wearing them shoes with the really long, you know, the, the, the front of the shoe was really long and pointy. So, like, I had a dream that I took out of Jordan and it had that kind of toe. It had the long, it was like a tennis shoe with the long and pointy, pointy African kind of brother style. Because, you know, they wear a certain style of clothes that we just don't wear. Uh, they, they have stores up here, which is, I think, is good. That they can, you know, stay in their, their traditional attire. As I said, you know, I had a teacher at A&T, and, and I've told this joke many times. He said, the difference between America and Africa was, in Africa, you wear one shirt for three months. He said, America, you got to have a new shirt every week. If not every day, <laughs> it's like, yeah, mug, you, you be stanking if you don't. Uh, if you saw the Tenet movie, that's exactly what happened in Russia yesterday um, between them. Uh, that's a good, I hadn't thought about that. That's a good uh, idea. They kind of uh, are trying to, um, the future is trying to fight the past and the past is trying to fight the future. I can dig that.
Ah. <laughs> Might have to give me some water and hit this big bong in front of you. But it's very, it's very, uh, you know, like the bong and shit is very, uh, very, I don't know, fiendish looking. <laughs> it's very fiendish looking. <laughs> so I'll fuck with this little one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, in your opinion, are the most uh, sneakers somewhat fake? Because I've been looking on uh, websites and I can't tell the difference. Um, Let me show you one thing. Let me grab this and I'll kind of answer your question. Let me grab this. Uh, now, like, you know, like with, with real Jordans, you're always going to see American, Europe, men's, women's, you know, you're going to kind of, and, and you know, all these, like you, you can show this right here to show their real Jordans. This is kind of the setup that has to be there and what, um, what uh, people look for, you know. So that's, that's the thing is you, because uh, the generic boxes, now I don't know if these, these Jordans is a, let me, let me see this other shoe. Wait a second. Let me grab these other ones. Like, really? Okay, so so this is what you look for too if you see a fake box. Like if you saw a fake Nike, uh, all Nikes are set up like this, top, bottom. So if you see a, a Nike, not, not Jordan, but if you see a Nike um, box and it ain't got the double like this, more than likely they're fake. They should have the men's size and the women's size. <laughs> I wish I could turn the camera and show over this. This mug is, uh, <laughs> he likes hanging with me. So I don't mind. I'll keep the door open. I don't like my female cat in here. Cause she will eat on my plant. It doesn't deserve that. Like I had to talk to him. I had to mentally talk to him. Like, look, you deserve the right to be around here and going around. But I said, so do my plants. They have a consciousness. They have feelings. And they ain't here for you to eat. You got plenty of food downstairs to freaking eat. So you don't need to eat on my shit. <laughs> uh, uh, I will put the real tags on the fake boxes. <laughs> oh, they're looking good fakes. <laughs> um, I'm going to say like, uh, when I first moved here, now I don't, I, I don't know if they were made in Africa, but when I first moved here, it was, it was like there were stores and that's all they sold was fake Jordans. I mean, they, they sold them cheaper, but that's all they sold. And at the time, and I mean, that must have been the summer of seven. You couldn't tell much difference. As I said, I think I had the threes that had that white bottom and I bought them and, and their white bottom had no grip <laughs> of the knockouts I bought. So I ended up uh, cutting my grass with those shoes. I think those was Jordan threes and they had that white clear bottom. Yeah, you, it's hard to duplicate that because they couldn't duplicate it right. There was no grip. It was like I was out there hooping with dress shoes on. <laughs> Literally no grip, so. And I've told y'all before, this one store I'm talking about, I mean, the, the fakes were so good. Somebody busted in his storefront and stole a whole wall. He had a whole, he had two walls of nothing but Jordan for, you know, like down both, hall, down both walls, just to the ceiling, nothing but Jordans. Both sides. And so when they ran into his storefront, they wiped out one whole side. It didn't put him out of business, but it took half his inventory. And if you follow the news, you know, they've been, uh, uh, it's been some big bust, you know, of them, uh, of people massively robbing um, um, Nike shipments and shit. I, I think it was a big bust out in California. It was like five, $6 million worth of in inventory. So it's big business. Ah, to me, they're all fake. Ha, ha, these are good, uh, reputable websites, though. Ha, 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 the fakies. <laughs> so, you know, it was a big deal here. Um, and, you know, they were so affordable that 
uh, my boys. I didn't care if they tore them up. But what, what was interesting, though, they started not being copies anymore. They were they were Nikes, but they weren't like copies of Jordan. And that's how I noticed like by 9, 10, 8, 9, 10, they weren't as well. They, they were made cheaper. They looked cheaper. And I think what happened is the government cut cut down, you know, on because they were coming, you know, mostly from from Africans. So I don't know necessarily from Africa. Ah, but you know, I, I was always buying the knockoffs. I'd buy, you know, I would support the people in my neighborhood. And like I was saying, with like like with uh Stephen Barry's, you know, um, those you know Stephen Marbury's brand. I mean, those shoes for little boys was fine. For men, they wasn't worth. For- Hey, for men, they work. You can keep the door because Buddha's in here. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, she threw me off. So, you know, it was uh, not shoes that men, but like grass cutting shoes and stuff like that. And 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 what I, I liked about the knockoffs for, you know, if you have young boys, boys is hard on shoes. So they would tear them up a couple months, go buy them some more. <laughs> Same with the Stephen Barry. Buy them two at a time. <laughs> Uh, but it's still fake stuff. You know, I've been studying about l- lately about fake Jordan or fake uh, Rolexes. And, you know, the, the parts that come from different parts of the country. <clears throat> All right. The dryer's going, so I know I'll get a little that sound. Shut the door a little bit. <laughs> so, uh... Um, but you, so you still see them every now and now. I know a dude was, I, I, I follow sneakerheads and I follow a lot of watch dudes. And you know, uh, the, the prices of watches is really an interesting thing because um, unless you do your studying, you don't really know, you know, even if you got bread, even if you got bread, you got to really do your studying on, on the pieces you get, you know? So, and you can get like you know, a Tucson watch, you can get that for some of them under two grand. So, you know, uh, Bulova makes a good watch. Um, shit, fucking these. You know, these can save your life. If you fall down, these can fucking, like, t- call the people for you. So, ah, and, you know, one of, like, you can get the big one. It costs about seven, eight hundred bucks. Third generation, I think, is, you know, the big one. So, but it's funny how people, you know, even, um, I mean, you you see real experts that deal with this and uh so you can get tricked you can really get tricked and you can end up buying crap if you don't know and and what happens is a lot of people with money they they, their arrogance turns into ignorance you know the arrogance turns into ignorance because again um when you're talking about big money then people is there to make as much profit as they can so you kind of have to know what you're getting. But it's, you know, it's not the only thing. <laughs> it's a lot of other things in life you could have. So you can put money into a lot of different things. But I'll say this for a, you know, if you're talking about um, um, wealth that can be handed down, now those are heirlooms that can be handed down. And for the most price, they keep, they keep, uh, I think he was saying, I was listening to the guy today, and he said of all the watches, the Daytonas have pretty much kept their, their value. Because, you know, as, as the gold and stuff goes up and down, you know, the same thing with the watches. They're affected by, by gold prices as well, unless you get a stainless steel one. So, and, you know, it's, it's amazing because at one time you could get them stainless steel ones for, I think, I think we got ours. It wasn't even 2500 I think, for two. You know, she had a smaller one. Mine was a little bigger, stainless steel. And I think it was like 2,500 for the two. And I can remember when you could get a presidential for like nine grand, nine grand. And now them watches like uh, the fully ones are like close to 30, you know, some of them. And just like we, you know, we see the stock prices. But you know, one thing I always like to start off with is, is the Great White North. And you see right now, light snow. So if you look at our weather, this shit's coming. Oh, this white line there, that shit's coming. And what they predicted is um, tomorrow, it's going to be a point tomorrow where it's going to snow two inches every hour. And that's a tremendous amount. 
Um, and so the storm is with us for the next few days. Let's see. Um, winter storm arrives Sunday, bringing heavy and wet snow and strong winds. If you must travel, keep an extra flashlight food. They saying if you break down your car, um, five to eight inches. So that's, that's, that's significant. And I live on a hill, so it's always more. And so, uh, let me see. And I live technically like right in here. So that Chaska, well, as you see, the I live here. That's where I live. So I, I live not, it, it, it appears like parts of St. Paul, I guess I can hit pretty, pretty quick, but you know, it's about equal, both about 20 minutes to get to either one. Um, and so this is what we're going to be facing. Yeah. So, um, we're supposed to get, uh, you see snow all night. Um, and this, this is spring winter's over rain and snow are expected in your area. A rain and snow mixture will come down. So they say by Tuesday, it'll probably be all rain. And what does it say for Burnsville? Uh, uh, what does it say here? Oh, okay. Oh, because I, I touched Chaska, so I put it on her. Chaska's a minute from me. Chaska is a minute. Did anybody watch the fights? They just came back home from watching the fights. I didn't go. You know, I'm watching hooping. I ain't really no um, UFC kind of guy. I, I, I like boxing. I'm more of a boxing person. So here it comes. Nearly a foot of snow may may fall, but but we're probably eight inches. And again, if you look at the temperatures, you know how long once it you know the temperatures go up, the snow melts pretty quick. But as you see, so it's, it'll snow for a minute because you know. And what's funny is the uh, the uh, um, 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 the ski hill they've closed for the season. The ski hill has closed for the season. So they're they're not even open. They they won't open back up until the summertime when they start doing concerts over there. So, um, ah, here we go. We, as we get into the morbid news, you know, uh, we got the playoffs going, so they can't help but, you know, show who's been sacrificed. So this is the first name I'm seeing. Peter Angelos, a combative owner of Baltimore. I wonder if he's still with Baltimore. <laughs> What did it say? Um, Peter, a Baltimore lawyer who won, who won, uh, what does it say? About, okay, a Baltimore lawyer who won hundreds of millions of dollars for workers injured to exposure to asbestos. So he got rich for at that, okay. And then became widely known to public as combative owner of, uh, he, owned, he owned it for three years. Wow, 30 years. The Oilers announced the death. They did not disclose, control of the organization's son. Okay, he already gave up power, but his family still owns it. The family reached agreement. They would turn over and control the group led by, okay, David Robustine, a Baltimore native, one of the founders. So they're selling it. They're selling it. The, cell, the family, once he died, was getting rid of it. And baseball world was seen as a hands-on boss, controlling, feisty, demanding, and prone to second-guessing on-field decisions. Remember, they were one of the cheapest pay-in places, too. Uh, he went through three managers in his first four years to him and once considered firing a manager because a player bunted in the game where he thought he should have swung. As a managing partner of the group of investors who bought the Orioles for $1.73. Fought a prolonged and ultimately long battle to keep uh, to keep a uh, major league out of Washington or Northern Virginia because he didn't want to have competition. He claimed that another team in a proximity to Baltimore would siphon off fans and imperil the Baltimore Orioles' financial stability. Even though Washington got his team in 05, national games were carried Mid-Atlantic Sports Net, which was run by him. <laughs> the unusual arrangements was allowed Orioles to control the Nationals' TV rights and set their value, ranked the Washington team ownership, and led years of lawsuits over t fees. Um, he derived his fortune from his Baltimore law practice, which he put 18-hour days in as he built his business to a legal juggernaut. He specialized in personal injury and product liability cases. Many of his clients were labor unions and union members. He had a case of steel and shipyard workers who claimed to suffer from melatonin. Um, for much of the 80, I can't blah, blah. 
Um, a form of cancer in the lining of the lugs. You also expose your asbestos on the job. When the number of claims reached 80, 700, they were consolidated into a class action suit against employers and others, which was settled for more than a billion. His cut was one third or more than 300 million. Among other things, it supplied money to buy Orioles at auction from New York venture capitalist Eli Jacobs, who declared bankruptcy. He paid a major share. He paid 40 million. Well-known people in Marantise, including uh, Tom Clancy, Barry Levin, and tennis player Pam Shriver. Uh, Pam Shriver is a Kennedy. People remember that. Sergeant Shriver? That was her dad. Uh, he had a new ballpark that was envy of baseball plus a regional fan base. About the quarter of those fans made a trip to Baltimore for the area. You had been without a major league team since 70. They were orders ticket in downtown, blah, blah, blah. Uh... The talk of a franchise, Louis Kevin Mr. Andler openly sought to block any such move. He argued the city had had twice baseball teams because of last luster fan. His wishes were overruled. And the National League's Montreal Expos became the Washington Nationals in 05. It doesn't seem like it's that for long ago, does it? So that's who this mug was of the debauchery, you know. He drank the beast cup, so it's time for the beast to take him away. <laughs> take me I'm yours. Oh, and should we get into the hoop talk? You know, because, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe it'll be in here. Um, that Creighton game was a good game. That last game was a good game. Uh, I talked to PJ, uh, uh earlier, PJ Allen earlier, and we, he, he's, He's right. It's something about Gonzaga where we watch them from a mid-major because it's a small college. We watch them from being just a mid-major to every every year. Now I don't know. Like they they had really good teams. Like when Suggs was here, remember Suggs hit that half time half court shot that uh, during the Final Four put him in the championship, but they lost. <clears throat> so I don't know when they're going to put them through. But Gonzaga, they always like Gonzaga. Um, See, it got to be more scores than this. Just this, 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 just this one. Now, I would say Oakland, Oakland had them. Oakland had North Carolina State beat. They had them. And if you guys remember, um, it was thrown like they were, they were struggling to get a shot off. They threw it out to number one. I think it was number one, and it, it, he threw it away. They gave it to him up top, and he threw the ball away. They didn't even get a shot off. And that was really the game in the second overtime. That was the game. So that was a good game, too. That was a pretty good game. <laughs> um, and so what do we got? Uh, so today's game, we have UConn and Northwestern that play Sunday. Um, another Sunday game is going to be San Diego and Yale. Then we're, okay, today we had, okay, and then to, um, is it to Quince and Illinois? We had uh, Iowa State and Washington State. Because uh, we're in the 16, right? Yeah. And then we had uh, North Carolina and MSU, and we had North Carolina move on. We had uh, Grand Canyon and Alabama. I don't know who won that one, so I'd have to look that up. Oh... Bracket scores. Oops. Okay. Oh, yes, I saw this. DeQuince got beat by Illinois. I don't know what I'm tripping. I saw that earlier. I'm old man and y'all. Illinois looks good. Okay, uh, Tennessee beat Texas. That was a good game. That was a real good game. Tennessee and Texas was a good game. Um, let me see. See more games. Ah, they're putting all these bullshit scores in here. Okay, here we go. Um, Alabama, no, not A and M. See, they're giving me. Okay, those are no no good for me. Okay, right here. This is nope. That's no good. Okay, Arizona, Dayton. We already got that. Um, that's no good for me. Okay. This is what I'm looking at. Okay. Gonzaga and Kansas. We got that. North Carolina 
Michigan State, we got that. Um, Iowa State beat Washington State. I don't think I had that. Okay. Yeah, so. So Washington State. Right? Washington State. Yep. No, Iowa State beat them. Wrong. Iowa State won that one. So it'd be Illini versus them. Um, of course, uh, it was a good game. No, Oakland uh, was a good game. Illinois, the Quince. Uh, Tennessee beat Texas. Oregon, Oregon beat Creighton. So I think that's all the Saturday games. All the Saturday games. Um, yeah, so we got the games tomorrow, and the games come on at 11. So I think, yeah, I think I'm caught up here. Yeah, so I think I'm all caught up. That's all the scores they're given. So I think I'm all caught up. Oh, let's see. And so tomorrow, the first game comes on. And I don't know if this is 10 o'clock my time. I don't know. Because this morning, it, it came on early. Um, so maybe it's it's 10 o'clock my time or 11 my time. Some Most of the time, it does consider where I live. So we've got a early game then. And then we've got a Midwest Regional. 140, that's about right. So we got Purdue in Utah. And then we have South Regional at four. We're going to have Duke and James Madison. West Regional, this should be a good game. Baylor and Clemson will be a pretty good game. Um, and then we have UConn and Northwestern at 645. We have Texas A&M and in Houston at 740. Uh, uh, yes. Okay, and then, uh, then, then we have uh, San Diego State and Yale. That's gonna be a good game. San Diego State and Yale will probably be a pretty good game. So, I hope y'all like it. Hey, Joey, thank you for joining me. And I know coming on this late, you definitely got to have. You got to have vision. Hey, Perry. Uh. You like Colorado tomorrow? Thank you for joining. Uh, Got to have vision. Colorado tomorrow. Let me look at the overall. Where overall, where are they going to end up being? I tell you what, I like the overall team quickness with Colorado. Um. I think that's what surprised everybody is how quick they were. So, I, you know, I did like the way they played and hustled, uh, you know. Um, and it helps, you know, it helps all the athletic program that they, you know, be it a made, made a, won a couple games because every game is like a million dollars. So where are they at for tomorrow? Colorado plays Marquette. Ah, you know, it, that's that's going to be a tough matchup for them. But, again, they have good team quickness in Colorado. And so, I don't know. I don't know if uh, – I don't know if it's, they're going to be able to bounce. I, I don't know. I don't know. Marquette is a decent team, and I don't know how well they're going to match up. Oh, Minnesota, the Gophers won. So, the Gophers are still in the NIT. So, they won. The Gophers won two games. So, I don't know. I think I would go with Maryland in that game. I'd probably go Maryland or, or Marquette, excuse me, Marquette there. Um, I'm going Purdue here. Um, I'm going, um, I like Baylor. I like Baylor, so I'm going to stay with Baylor. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where we at? Where we at? Um, Houston, I really like Houston. Houston has been tough the last few years. Um, Iowa and Utah, I'm going to pick. No, that's not not, not one of uh, where we, where was our late games. We got UConn and Northwestern. I think everybody thinks that UConn is going to win it. Uh, UConn is looking good, but I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of leaning more towards North Carolina. I think they have though, and and you know, it was a couple years ago that they were in the finals. So, uh, and uh, Alabama Grand Canyon. I think Grand Canyon is not going to have enough firepower. So I think Alabama is going to take them. But this, they, you know, it should be some pretty decent games. And of course, I'm taking Duke over James Madison. But James Madison shot well, shot well. Um, so this game comes on. I might watch a little bit of uh, because my boy is playing, uh, Duncan Garcia. He's he's playing tomorrow. 
And we'll see if Purdue can hang on. Because uh, uh, Creighton, 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 Creighton. Uh, Creighton's big guy. And uh, this big guy here is going to be a nice matchup if, if they meet. You know, it's going to be a meet, meeting of the minds, you know, and bringing the, you know, Steph Curry's kind of st style of ball tried to kill the big man. So it's good seeing big man come out playing. So. So I don't know. I don't know if I like if I like Colorado that much in that situation, in that game. I don't think so. I think Marquette is probably a little too strong for him. But we'll see because Colorado played a decent schedule. So, you know, all that all that does play in mind. Um, what is this shit here? <laughs> oh. So it was some good games. It was some real good games. Oh, how many did he, did he end up with? Um, uh, Jake Gelke set an NCAA record. He he can shoot. I mean, they gonna put he gonna get a chance somewhere just because he can shoot. I think he. I don't know about his stamina. I don't know about his stamina because at times it just seemed like he got tired and he really didn't shoot. You could see, you know, in his legs, but uh, uh, set an NCAA tournament record for three point three pointers in two games. So he had, uh, I think he, uh, after a breakout performance in the 10 three-pointers, number 14, first round upset of Kentucky, who earned a NIA deal, who earned a, who, uh, he got a NIA deal with TurboTax. He provided another five three-pointers on Sunday. Uh, that gave him the most three-pointers through two games in NCAA history. We were just absolutely ridiculous. Even those who were betting on it hit extremely unlikely two-pointer had to be impressed. So... So I think he ended up with 15. Is that how many he ended up with? Basketball. I thought it was 15. Yeah, because he hit 10 and he hit five today. So he ended up with 15. Then what kind of shoes are these? These are sweet. Uh, I would say too much over the top with the left hand. I would want them. I would want my left hand more balanced here. You see how he's really on top? And that's probably because of small hands and when he was shorter that, uh, but this, this should be more here than on top. If, if you see what I'm saying is I would have it more here, you know, on the, where this, this, the, you know, where the, the, the seams come together, his hand is really on top. So, so, you know, and this is his six year <laughs> I don't know if he got hurt. They ain't explain that, but this is his sixth year of college basketball. No, no, this is his fifth. He had four years where he was before. He was at Hillsdale. He was at Hillsdale College, where one of my partners went. You know, rest in peace to uh, Steve Dunning. He Steve Dunning went to Hillsdale, and I was telling you know I tell the story of my friend. Uh, that, uh, you know, one of the saddest stories, you know, other than my friend that got shot in the face in high school, but this guy, you know, I still, I, I tell this story all the time and I don't know what happened to this guy, but this guy, Hillsdale is part of a private uh, education system in Michigan, which is called, uh, it's Hillsdale. Kalamazoo College is actually called the, the Harvard of the Midwest. It is that exclusive. It's an engineer school too. So it's another school called Albion College. It's Adrian, and that's where my friend, my friend went to Adrian College. But my friend suffered from some kind of uh, mental breakdown. And so, uh, as I, I think I told the story before, when he went to college, he was down there a couple of days, and they end up, uh, couldn't, he climbed a tree for some reason. You know, he's supposed to be getting ready to play football. This nigga's up in a tree, tripping out. So they sent him home, and then I guess he went in the service, and I, they, he he had to flush out the service too. Um, I, I don't quite know what happened to him, but um, a lot was taken away from him. And you know, it's 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 sad when you see uh, um, when you grow up with really beautiful people that are just just really good friends and beautiful people, and really should have a good future, and then you know, out of nowhere, their future just you know they didn't even make it out of eighteen. And it's like, yeah, he didn't die, but whatever that spark that made him special was, that died. 
because his scholarship, you know, my full scholarship to A&T wasn't equal to that scholarship he had at Adrian. Adrian was a more prestigious school. He had to have better grades and everything. So his scholarship was actually better than mine. And, uh, uh, yeah. And so now he's just roaming the streets. And, you know, I don't think he's homeless. Um, I saw his brother die, but it's just sad that he didn't get to, you know. Oh. Wow, I guess the last 100-year-old survivor of the Japanese surprise attack on Pearl Harbor died. Wow. Wow. Um, high school. Uh, he joined in 39 and served as a radio man at Pearl Harbor on a Navy base. Okay. On uh, the mornings, remember laying his bank and similar to enclosed porch, which he said would help protect the servicemen for the relentless mosquitoes. And suddenly, sound explosion blared through the base. Okay. I saw a dude on a show that was the last survivor, living survivor, and this was in the 70s, but he, he saw Lincoln get killed. He was a little boy at the theater when Lincoln got killed. There used to be a show called What's My Line?, you know, they would try to hide their voice and shit. You know, if it's a famous person, you know, they're trying to hide their voice, change their voice so they don't know. But if it's a person that is not famous, you know, they give them some clues. But he was the last survivor that saw Lincoln get killed. And if you watch that thing on, um, it's either Apple TV. Um, I've talked about that before about, um, what is that book called? Um, but it's about, it's, it's hunting for, uh, looking for Booth. And so they've made kind of a recreation, which is interesting. It has a lot of interesting twists and turns. If you like that kind of thing, you know, that's not for everybody. But if you can get into it, which I do, I can get into that kind of thing. So it's to me, it's kind of cool. I love history. I love music, too. Rubber pickleball, okay. Now, I haven't been watching any of the women's hooping. hooping. Uh, don't really care for women's hooping too much, so. And it's funny, they want us to care about certain things, you know? It's like, uh, the, the king and queen got, you know, the, the chicks got cancer, the king got cancer. And you knew when they made that king of England, he wasn't gonna be there long. You already knew that. They was gonna get him out quick. No, Nobody liked that mug. So you know they wasn't gonna let him be, and he in his 70s, so you know they wasn't gonna let him be king for long. And that's how dirty his mom was. His mom was dirty not to give that power up. And she probably, I mean, I guess she's like, fuck that. I'm keeping this shit till I, I die. And that's what she did. Wow. What is Drew Holiday's dealing with a dead arm? What is a dead arm? Friday, this absence is more simply being cautious. The point guard missed his third consecutive game due to a sprained right shoulder. He says he suffered when he hit a, he was hit on a screen during the Celtics win over the Wizards. Tell the Globe he's been experiencing dead arm. Whoa, dead arm. Damn. So that's more than a stinger. He's been receiving medical treatment. The rest is primarily ex ex his, his exec, exec, elixir. He believes he is making progress, but does not have a timeline for his return. Wow. Well, you can't say basketball is not physical because it is. Uh. Uh. Dune 2 is officially Tamachi Shamat's biggest domestic hit. Is that him? So Dune, uh, this dude, I guess Dune did better than Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka did good. Um, latest film, Dune Part 2, has become a top grossing movie this year. Directed by Part 2 has made over $200 million dom um, domestically and passed $500 million milestone. Success with Willy Wonka has prepared him to nearly 1.2 in global box offices. Okay, I knew Willy Wonka. Uh, the producer, uh, 100 million, Dune Part 2, grows four point on his fourth day. Friday, the Mexican office, taking total to two, this puts the two million ahead of Wonka. Okay, so Wonka did well too. So, you know, they got rid of uh, George Floyd and brought, brought this dude in. And they're going to bring George Floyd back. But I called that shit. That, it was like that nigga looked just like George Floyd. Just like him. 
So they just made George Floyd, just like I, I put that, that that commercial of Zimmerman. They put Zimmerman in commercial and ain't nobody noticed, ain't nobody like paying attention. But uh, that's how they do it. You know, they mock you by putting lookalikes in there. Oh, Shakur Stevenson to return on July 6th. Okay. I look forward to that. Uh, damn. Where is this at? Police searching for... Let me see this. I don't know who this is. I'm European girl, but let's check it out. Um, police searching for three missing siblings from Chettingham. So this must be England. From, uh, who are subject to court order preventing them from being in the care of their parents. Are subject to court order preventing them from being in... They took their... Okay. Uh, Gloucester Shower said it concerned the welfare of three-year-old, five-year-old, and an eight-year-old. So this must be the mama. They can't be around her. Wow, look at her. Why is the mama all made up? You know, European uh, English is described as being, let me see. Police said dark hair, has mousy hair, and long. It's not yet known what they're wearing. The mother is described as being tall and slim with a pale complexion. In a statement, I'd be everybody in England, a pale complexion. I am appealing directly to with anyone if the children may contact us. Yeah, they're just with her. They're all right. I don't know, you know, if the, what the mother's on over there. Ah, here's a basketball. Yeah, this is definitely a basketball sacrifice. USC basketball mourns passing of student manager after fight with brain cancer. I like his top. That's nice. So, yeah, this was for the Final Four, you know. This is one of the first ones for the Final Four. When they're Bruins manager, it didn't matter how well UCLA did, this is still a basketball sacrifice. So, you don't think they do it. They do. They still take out, you know. And I can't even say he drank from the Devil's Cup. I ain't going to say that. He ain't drank from the Beast Cup. But yet, he was associated with the Beast. And so, for some reason... Oh, Wicked movie release date, cast and everything. Wicked. Oh, so they can make... Oh, they, and they got the Wicked Witch being a sister. Because <laughs> uh, the play, Wicked... Look at this shit. <sighs> oh. Look at that shit. Wicked. Thanksgiving. So next Thanksgiving, a new Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Tony Award wins a musical uh, novel. The Life and Times of Wicked Witch of the West is finally heading to theaters next season. Is being adopted as one of the two major motion pictures under Universal. Okay. Wicked debuted in, in 03. In case you haven't heard by now, pop star Grande and Tony Winner, Cynthia Arvaro will lead the upcoming uh, films as Glenda and F. Lava, F. Lava, respectively, and will be directed by John Chu of Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, so many developments. So, uh, the trailer's first look mm, commercial. <laughs> Okay, this must be where the Wicked Lit Witch lives. All right. Guess this is her running in the Wicked Witch's crib or some shit. <laughs> uh, so, looks like around Christmas, that'll be something for you to do. Go to movies. Yeah, we didn't We didn't go to, uh, what the fuck is up, Ghostbusters? I doubt we go tomorrow. It's probably going to be snowing too today. I don't know. It was shit, we live around the corner from the movie theater. So... So I don't know. We might we might go up there. I'm not sure. Did y'all see Russell Wilson at the game? <laughs> Who was that? Pac-Man Jones was talking shit about Russell Wilson. And he's right. What Russell Wilson did benefit from a great defense. He had a great defense. He had Marshawn Lynch. He had a, 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 a veteran offensive line. And he could get out of trouble. And what happens to short guys as they get older and have injuries is they can't get out of trouble like they used to. And that's risk. And, and, and he holds the ball definitely too long. I mean, he holds the ball too long. I don't think anybody can argue that. That Russell Wilson just plain flat holds the ball too long. And that's been his downfall. And as you get older, you can't get away like you used to. 
So. <laughs> Uh, uh. Yeah, I ain't gonna be on too long. I'm on an hour already. Okay, it ain't gonna be too long. I'm gonna get some sleep tonight. Cause I ain't really get no sleep last night. Not really. I'm gonna get a little more sleep. Uh, I'm gonna get a little more sleep tonight. But it was cool laying in bed till two, listening to the game, you know, didn't get up. Because our God will get up early in the morning. I don't think it's too much debauchery tonight. Um, Preparing for Sunday snow. Yeah, it's not too much debauchery. It's the same shit. Um, if you guys want to come up here and do the polar plunge, <laughs> jump your ass in, in, in uh, Lake Minnetonka. Come on up here. I think you got to pay to do it, though. <laughs> Some people swear by it. Some people swear that it makes, you know, they, it gets everything going and shit. But uh, you know who mostly do that? Ain't too many of us trying to do that. I don't need to jump in cold water like that. So. <laughs> uh, Justin Field might take his job. Um. I'll say this. I think Justin Field being around Russell Wilson is going to be a big benefit. And that's, you know, that's where, like, Russell Wilson did take advantage of Denver, you know. Um, he kind of wanted them Tom Brady rules, have my own trainer. He, you know, I got a, I got an office here, you know. And, I mean, it was some bogus shit. And I can see why the, the, the fight back because of just the way he did. And, you know, he going to make 38, what, 38 million regardless. So he ain't worried. Matter of fact, it's going to put him over 40 because I think they're paying him two and then whatever bonuses. But I think what, what Fields is going to benefit from is truly seeing a veteran quarterback and how he goes about preparing. And, you know, again, you know, this is Fields, what, second, third year, maybe second, third. Uh, I don't think he's had that mentorship. Now, again, some, some dudes be assholes and don't want to mentor the young guys. I understand that. But I think it's a good... I just think the approach of the game, because I, I know, you know, Fields probably thought he knew how to, you know, go about preparing. But I think being around someone that's been doing it as long as Wilson's done it, I think he'll benefit from it. And, and will he outplay Russell? The offensive line is going to make a big, you know, big, big, big impact. Uh, will his receivers be able to get free? Will they be able to give him enough time? Will they have a balanced running game? To help him so you know they ain't just dropping everybody back on him so i think all those uh but he could he could he could and again you know you need two people because if somebody gets hurt and that's why i laugh when i hear all this shit about cam newton and shit and it's like people you know don't re don't forget jj watts or no no the other watts the watts out of pittsburgh destroyed his shoulder and once he did that he you know cam never threw the same he never threw the same after that. So he, so you know, he was never accurate. After 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 you know, Watts hit his shoulder, um, he was never accurate after that. He really couldn't throw, and that's that's the only problem I think he really had in, in New England is he just couldn't throw anymore. He couldn't throw with accuracy, and you know, with his shoulder banged up, he really couldn't run anymore. And just like uh, Cunningham, you know, um, Randall Cunningham, he took too, man, too much hits. I mean, and look how they did RG3, you know. Jay Gruden tried to purposely, after he got hurt, I mean, RG3 was already hurt, and he let them talk them in because they knew they was getting fired. Shinyham, them niggas was getting fired, so they talked him into to playing hurt, and he tore his knee up, and he was really never the same since his being um, rookie of the year. <sighs> And so sometimes you can't listen to motherfuckers around you. Uh, the black bear. <laughs> uh, so it's not a lot of debauchery today, which is good. These motherfuckers getting ready for this storm to come up here. Uh, well, the cities, it's always something in the cities. The cities has always got something going on. Uh, Yeah, and then right now, you know, Uber and Lyft is about to leave this motherfucker. So um, they're saying a lot of different ride shares is going to come up. 
So they're going to have to. And I was surprised they're leaving the, you know, because the, technically the airport is not in Minneapolis, it's in Bloomington. So kind of surprised that uh, uh, they made that move. Any of y'all out there, DoorDash? Any of y'all out there, DoorDash? I love ordering beer. They'll bring me beer. They When I first started DoorDashing up here, they would even bring me cigars. They won't bring me cigars anymore, but they'll bring me beer, liquor. My wife late drinks liquor. They bring that shit up here. <laughs> now you do is show ID. You know, my son had hacked him, you know, and he was like, oh, I ordered some beer, Dad. Just show your ID. You know, when he was like 8, 19, 18, 19. He's like, it's pretty cool, Dad. I'll buy you, I'll buy you a 40 ounce. <laughs> Nigga, I don't drink 40 ounces. Uh, and so, you know, I hope everybody, you know, on the weekend and the way they, they do this weekend thing is, you know, uh, living for the weekend. Remember that song? Living for the weekend. And, you know, really what it is, is, you know, it gives you a chance to fucking rest. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Uh, what did I just see? Does anybody out there still drink soda? I mean, really? Like, of all the things and all the information out there, I'm going to say this. Soda is just as bad as cigarettes. Drinking soda is just as bad for you as smoking a cigarette. Um, now, there is soda that don't have any sugar in it, but that's got, that's got a lot of different things inside of them. So, you know, can you get your fat ass out this time? <laughs> The door's open like this much. Okay, he got his fat ass in. Okay. I'm going to shut the door. Give me a second. I'm going to shut the door because uh, the laundry's on. All right, huh, my little knob on my desk fell apart. See if I can screw this bitch back in. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. All right. Uh, but as I was saying, you know, that's what the weekend is supposed to do, you know. And uh, it used to be, what, what was I reading? I was reading about this little boy. Um, this little boy was 13 years old. He worked in a factory and he worked 18 hours a day. <laughs> no school, just 18 hours a day factory. And that's why most jobs, that's how they did. When, you know, the industrial revolution came, that's what was required by the, the owners. For them to make a profit, you had to work 18 hours a day. Which was some bullshit. And they got rich off a lot of people's backs. By not paying very much, but getting a lot of work out of people. Matter of fact, it would be when you do eight, like, like you know, a lot of the work is, uh, how, how do they put it, is 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 actually um, like a, a fully eight hour day for most of you that work eight hours. You are actually, what's required of you for them to make a profit is probably five or six hours. And when you work over the five or six hours, you are giving them profits. That's what's fucked up. It's like they only really need you to work 25 hours a week for them to make a profit. So everything after those 25 hours, that's that's doubling their profit. So your your so your value to them is you to work the profit for them under the guise of your full time. But far as you know, you you're making them more money, of course, but you just don't realize that and so, so when they start cutting people and cutting jobs, you know they in real trouble. Because again, they, they only need you to work a certain amount of time to make their profit. And like, you know, the way food is now, like I, I use Nivea non-alcohol after I shave, after shave bomb. And for years, this shit, I watched it go from $3 to five dollars it was kind of like outrageous when it went up to five now this shit is damn near ten dollars for the same bottle that i've been buying 
since 2000, if not before. If not before, because I don't put alcohol on my face, and you shouldn't either. You know, you should get non-alcohol. And again, everybody's skin is different, but you look at me, I ain't got no bumps. My dad and my stepdad, they had, let me see if I can show you. They both had to get surgery. They had that shit where, you know, the hairs grow inside, and they both right here had to get surgery. And they both had, like, my dad had a keloid. My stepdad's keloid wasn't as bad. But they had got big bumps that got affected, had to have the motherfuckers have surgery. So they had both had scars on their neck. And, like, my friend from Vietnam, the way he shaved, he had to shave with that powder. I talked about that before. He had to get that powder because, you know, he would just bump up if he used a razor. His shit would just be full of bumps. And so, you know, in this day and age, you know, take care of your skin. Um... Take care of your skin. And I think too many times people don't. Um, and just take care of yourself. That's that's the main thing is take care of yourself. Uh, you know, self-love is the best love. And as I was talking about last night, when you leave and stuff, when you, you leave your home and how you represent yourself, it's like I used to tell my children the reason why I dressed them so nice before they went to school because they represent me and, and their mother. So we dress you a certain way because you represent us. So we're going to have you looking a certain kind of way. And my children can say what the fuck they want, but them niggas wasn't hungry and they had clothes and all the pictures show it. <laughs> And as much as I like clothes, I mean, shit, you know, I have no problem buying the little niggas good shit. But you can look at their pictures and all the shit is new in their pictures. <laughs> and that comes from me. Oh, but my, my ex-wife turned 50. Um, I don't know if I have any pictures of her because she doesn't look the same. She's lost a hell of a lot of weight and she's been sick. Uh, you know, she had, I talked to her yesterday, day before, and she had been bed bedridden again for a couple of days. So she's still with us. She's still, you know, her mother died at 53, you know, and her mother died of um, hepatitis. Um, her mother decided to be a, a, she had been a crackhead for years. And then all of a sudden she decided not to be a crackhead, become a heroin addict. And she shared needle with somebody that had hepatitis and both of them died which is very sad, but she was very unhealthy too. Cause what happens with hepatitis is you get sores, you know, and um, they don't heal. And so her sore was in her foot and she wouldn't stay off it. Cause you know, again, uh, crack people are going after it. And, and you know, I, it's not bad. Mother's just telling the reality, you know, she, and she lived a hard life. My, my ex-wife lived a very hard life. I mean, if, if I, I can make a movie out of the story, you just, you, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, the stories that I could tell you, you know, what happened to her when she was younger would be unbelievable. And the reason why she started living with me, you know, almost as soon as I met her is because to get her away from that shit. Um, and, you know, when she became a drug addict, when we had kind of broke up, it was because of all the pain she, she had endured as a child. Um, so, you know, I have no problems you know it's like i took her away from a lot of that shit and you know all her, her substance abuses issues you know that ain't really on me that was on her i know why she did it because she wanted to numb the world numb the memories and that's what happens and so being here has you know changed her quite a bit for the most part she's been drug free for at least uh uh, we've been divorced since 10, so she's probably, she was forced to be drug-free for a couple months, and that's kind of why I got the children, because she kept flunking drug tests. Um, she flunked three drug tests, and so that, it was like, <laughs> her lawyers quit her, and they just, we went to court. It's like, when I first went to court, I ain't have a lawyer. She had three lawyers, or advocate and two lawyers. And then by the end of it, I got a lawyer. The the guardian at Leiden thought we was going to sue her, so she brings in a lawyer, because she was the one that gave the children to them people so she brings the lawyer in and then my my lord my lawyer hits me and starts laughing she's like you know why her lawyer's here because she thinks they think we're going after her because technically we could she she put the children's in harm's way and so i kind of laugh because the guardian lied and you know all the other meetings she had a lot to say but after they took the children and gave them to me that bitch didn't have shit to say her lawyer talked and that, that was one of the funniest things i ever saw of of, of the power dynamic 
Here's a person that, that just thought when they met with us had supreme power. But in a matter of a month or two of meeting me, the shit was flipped where she was afraid of me suing her. So, uh, pay, yeah, they set him up for failure. Well, I just think also he didn't, he didn't have the skills that they needed for the short passing game. Just didn't have the skills. And if you can't be accurate as a quarterback, you're going to struggle. And the team's going to struggle. And if you can't make those short throws, in which he, and, and, and you know, he's never a good long ball, ball thrower, um, even when at his peak. And so after his arm got hit, he definitely wasn't throwing the ball long anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, look at this shit here. Now I talked about this the other night. No, this ain't, God damn, she looked like a little girl. Who is this? Oh, this ain't him. This ain't him. This ain't him. Let's see where the motherfucker's at. Oh, here he is. Now, come on now. Now, I know, you know, actors can can change roles, but ain't nothing in the world gonna make us think anything else that this dude than other than a motherfucker wanna put on his pants and show his ass to somebody. Can you plug it? That, you know, I don't care how masculine you try to make him. All I see is a person that wants to be plugged. <laughs> that turns around and exposes it and says, can you plug it? <laughs> so I, I will not be seeing his movie at all because I, I just see him as one thing. <sighs> oh, I just see him as one thing. Man, I didn't even watch the NBA games since the college games, and that's the kind of cool thing. It makes you forget about the NBA. And you just really kind of concentrate on the college game. Uh, it's funny how they take words um, and, and they, they change the meaning of words. And woke is one of the main things. And like when woke first started being, you know, pushed around, it, it meant that you woke up to the realities of the fakeness of what's around us. That's what woke became. It's like you saw and you didn't believe. I mean, really, it was. It, this is what woke come from. You no longer believed in the news and the newspapers and the media because you, you could dig deeper to see the lies and the fakes of everything. And that's what it meant. But then you see the media changes it. Now it means liberal. Woke means liberal now. And that's not, you know, and that's that's really one way of them truly changing a word that wasn't created to mean liberal. This is something that the Republicans have done to 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 uh, demonize, demonize people, because that's not what woke woke meant when it came. It did not mean that. It meant something entirely different. So. Here we go. Um, <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's watch this. Um, six hour, 365, a compact pistol. The rev okay, I'm sorry. Let me 12 of America's most popular handguns and how much they cost. So uh, 365 is a small nine, isn't it? Offering 10, 12, 15 rounds, stems from uh, balance of size. It costs around $500. Pretty sure this is a 9 millimeter. Next, we have a P320, and this is what I have. I've had one forever. And uh, this holds 21, 20 in this clip, plus 1, so 22. Um, the modular handgun allows users to customize grip, barrel links. Yeah, you can put it in anything. It is re uh, reliable and performer. The series includes a range of models, maintaining a high accuracy. Uh, I just saw a brand new one for 800 bucks. Matter of fact, I, it was eight or 900 bucks. I saw a brand new one for eight or 900 bucks. So I, I, this 500 is a little low. And then you can get the extended magazines. Um, next we have... <laughs> The cheapest guns you can buy. And I hate to say it. I, I had, is this what was oh, 19? Yeah, I, I don't care for Glocks. I had a I had a, a 40 caliber 43, I think it was called a Glock 43. And yeah, I just I don't like these. Um again about 565, so they're very affordable. 
Um, a code Python. Look at this. $1,500 for this six-shooter. Yes, it will shoot the motor out of a car, but again, it's only got six shots. So too many people don't want. This is for collectors. This ain't an everyday carry. Um, what we got here, we've got a Beretta 90 series. Um, 18 plus one for 600. This is not bad. This is not bad. Um, remember, uh, Beretta and Taurus are technically the same company. Um, Taurus was contracted to make cheaper versions of Beretta. So they are technically the same company or at least the same, um, um, they have the same model. I, I, I was just talking about Taurus, you know, same company. <laughs> Uh, budget friendly gun it cost about 267 is this a nine though it's a practical choice 12 plus one yeah i guess this is a nine two don't get a 380 don't get a 380 um this is the glock 44 this shoots 20 don't uh, look never buy a, a 22 long rifle it ain't gonna kill anybody it ain't gonna stop anybody it's a waste of money you don't want that um, this is a 380. Again, pass on 380s. I don't care how affordable they are, pass on them. They're not gonna, I mean, they can kill somebody, but they ain't gonna penetrate any vest. Um, this is in 22 long rifle. Don't waste your money on it. It's not worth it. Smith and Wesson. This is classic, uh, 38. Now 38 is going to put a thump on everybody. Plus, especially if you get this plus P, um, this one is 450, which is high. And this, does this shoot five or six? It doesn't really tell, but uh, you can get this in a 357 too. But this 38 special is not that different from a, a, a nine. I mean, this is, if you do the test, this is going, you know, put a big lump in their chest. If they got a vest on, if you hit, you know, pure flesh. Yeah. This is going to put a big gap in them with this plus P. So, uh, excuse me. Um, CZ, CZ makes a better gun than this. Um, as you see, it's kind of bulky and big, uh, not a bad gun, very reliable, very good shooters, only $600. But again, look how big this frame is for carrying. Um, we got the Smith and Wesson shield, Smith and Wesson shield, which is a very popular gun, uh, round four. I think it was a little slightly more. Um, there's variations of this gun too. And then we've got a conclusion, each of these, whatever. So, so you got to, you know, get, get, get what you get for yourself and, you know, for protection. Uh, you need a rifle too. So definitely have a rifle, shotgun. I mean, everybody needs a shotgun, a rifle, and then, you know, what you carry every day. Because what's really cool is somebody try to fuck with you, you pull that aha out, out on the ass. They be like, oh, <laughs> oh. You ever rob somebody to try to rob you? <laughs> you know, you ever rob somebody to try to rob you? You know, had to pull that thing on them and like, matter of fact, motherfucker, I'm going to take all your shit. I have robbed a couple people. I remember a gay guy. Stopped, I was walking home, chilling with my, my ex, uh, my ex, my first wife. I was I was walking home from, from an A&T's campus, walking back to my apartment. Took me about 10, 15 minutes. It wasn't a long walk. I'm carrying that 357 um, J model, 357 with the pearl handles in the bag. This nigga just stops me and is like, asks me, did I want to ride and want to party? And I was like, oh, what you got? You got anything good? What you got? And that motherfucker started showing me all his weed and shit. And I like, put that thing on him. I was like, man, give me your wallet. Give me all that dope right there. And give me you know, all your money and get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> He's like, why you do this to me, man? <laughs> fuck you. Like, no, I don't need a ride, but you do need some help. He's lucky I didn't take his car. But, uh, so I've robbed niggas. Eh? Shit, motherfuckers. Some niggas deserve being robbed. So, and you can tell the difference with niggas ain't never, you know, got in the streets. <laughs> I robbed a nigga one time. The nigga saw me in the store buying shit, buying some shoes. What the fuck are you going to say to me? He ain't going to say shit to me. I'd have beat his ass in the mall. He was easy. He was easy, Mark. Ah, motherfucker, give you the money and go get the dope. <laughs> Two or three times I, I was on time with it. And the last time I was like, yeah, fuck him. He ain't nothing he can do about it. This is a lick, as they used to call it. This was a lick. Uh, <laughs> 15 all-time favorite handguns that dominated the 70s. Yeah, some killing motherfuckers in the 70s. 
that's what people don't understand is how much killing was done in the 60s and how it, it, it's still fairly easy to kill somebody, but it's hard, harder to hide them. You got to really hide their asses now. Well, you know, I'm not, I, I didn't come on here to go very, lo very long. Uh, I'm going to come on again tomorrow night just to kind of go over the hoop thing again. Uh, I might make a little short video of how much snow we do get because we'll have a lot more tomorrow night. But, uh, you know, I just love coming on here and the people that, 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 that appreciate my work. I'm glad you do. Thank you. Oh, and I didn't make any sports videos today. Uh, the one I wanted to make, um, it was a nasty dude followed it up. Nasty. They only showed it twice. But he had a, for what, what, what game? I don't even remember what game it was, but it was a nasty follow-up dunk. And they only, they showed it like when he did it, and they only showed it one other time. And I, I was getting ready to do it, and I don't know, something happened with the camera. Or I, I, I think I set the remote down, and it changed the channel or some old shit, and I couldn't get it. So, uh, but, you know. This this is you know a therapy, therapy to get get some of these ideas out and share them to the world. <laughs> you dig? Because that's what it is, you know, to have an elder come on here and then you know, like no one can say that you know I've tried to cheat anybody, you know. And, and there's niggas that's around here and he say it's like what what trips me out is some of you will be on somebody's, uh, you'll be subscribed to people and you'll be on their live and you give them bread and they don't even make you a moderator. So why the fuck are you giving them bread? Like, like you're supporting them, but they don't even support you. So why would you give somebody bread that you're on their live, you subscribe to them, but you, you, they don't make you a moderator and you're giving these niggas bread almost every time they come on? What sense does that make? It's like they're ignoring you almost and you're still giving them bread. What sense does that make? Why would you give a nigga a bread that ain't even recognizing you as a person? You know? You see, it ain't very many people that's on here that ain't, ain't moderators. But some of you give niggas money that you ain't even a moderator on their channel. Now, make that make sense. <laughs> you know? And I know some of y'all ain't even thought about it like that. Like, I like what the nigga said, so I give him a couple of dollars. <laughs> And them niggas need that money, too. You know, them niggas, you can just tell they need the money. Ah. Like Brother Nick, 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 Nick Taylor, he don't need the money. You know, he just does it to have fun with it. You know, he just likes doing it, likes having the good equipment, likes doing it. But he don't need the money. He's one nigga you can look at. He don't really need it. <laughs> Some of these niggas depend on these checks, though. You know, the 20th the, through the 25th the every month. You know, he's like, I need them donations. And that's kind of funny. And you got other people that have big channels. They don't say shit about money. They don't, they don't ask for it at all. They don't ask for likes. You know, none of that shit. Hey, Lorenzo, what's up? Oh, Lorenzo, thank you for joining. You got to have vision. Ah, good point. Well, you know, just check it out. Check it out. Check it out. And I ain't trying to pocket watch nobody or cut nobody's money off, but I mean, some of these people take people for granted. And that's my only point. Anybody out there been watching Shogun? I trying to get into it, but I don't know. I didn't watch the, yeah, I guess I did watch the original one, but. So that's new. This nigga died already. He ain't just died. Yeah, this nigga died when? He ain't just died. Norman Lear didn't just die. He died a while ago. This can't be. He died at 101. Goddamn. Didn't say when he died. When did he die? Um, Maladine Pilato, 100, retired this year. She worked at her family's business from 18 to 99. Goddamn. Where did Norman Lear? Uh, it doesn't tell. But it says he was 101. No, that's not a bad way to die. So, he was born, no, he's around my grandfather's age. My grandfather, I think, was born in 22. So, he's born in 22, 23, 24, somewhere in there. 22? Yeah, we're at 24. So, he's born in 22. Yeah, my grandfather, he's my grandfather's age. If my grandfather would have still been alive, but he lived to his 90s. He didn't die till 10. He, had, he was my last living, living grandparents, was my grandfather. 
ah, because my grandmother, uh, my grand, my grandfather, my mother's father died in four, I think. Then my grandmother died in six, the year my daughter was born. Yeah, and then my my father's shit, my other grandmother. Like, check this out. You talking about grief? In a six month period, my uncle dies, my dad's brother, my mother's sister, and my grandmother all died within six months of each other. Now you talking about what's hard, and I mean, I was close to all of them. You know, I was real close to my uncle, but all of them. I win five. You went five out of eight games today. Two or three loss. Uh, lesson learned. <laughs> Much on the eleven seeds. Ah, okay. Um, today I still got to go go through it. Um, break this shit down neatly. Cause yeah, I, I lost Kansas. I can see here. I won Creighton. Creighton. I won them. Creighton. I won Creighton. I won Tennessee. Um, that's tomorrow. This is starting to make more sense. No, yesterday didn't really make sense because I did go all the way to the Final Four. Um, UConn, Illinois, Drake, Iowa. I got that one. Um, I lost Auburn. That was yesterday. So today, yeah, I lost. Let me see. Michigan State, I lost that. Well, you know, I already said Carolina probably is going to be in the Final Four. Michigan State is always just my um, emotional pick. Um, Baylor should, let me see. They play tomorrow. Arizona, that was today, wasn't it? So I lost that one. I did lose that one. Yeah, I lost the Kansas game too, so that's two. Um, these are tomorrow. Oh, okay, so here we go. I lost Kansas. Oh, I won that one. Oh, shit, I didn't do bad today. Okay, that one don't count. Arizona, Illinois, Iowa State, North Carolina State. I got North Carolina State. I lost Kansas, Creighton. Creighton, I got that one. So, yeah, I only lost two today. I only lost two today. So, not too bad. I'm falling a little bit. Girl, sit yourself down and talk to me. Tell me what's on your mind. Don't tell me everything's okay. Because if it was, you wouldn't be crying. Let's work it out. <laughs> Is that what you tell her? Let's work it out. Oh, um, minute. Uh, Minnetonka High School beat won the championship this evening. They beat Wachovia, and Waconia had the big 6'9", dude, that's going to be player of the year. But the young guys I watched last year all hooped, and they won. And so Minnetonka won. Um, they won the sectional last year, and then this year they won it all. So my nephew went to the game. My wife took my nephew out this uh, evening. They, they watched the game. I didn't download the app. I didn't really care that much. We were going to go, but it's like when it comes down, I mean, it's like really – oh, and, it, and I was, it wasn't at the Target Center. Um, the Target Center had a lot going on, so they held it at the Williams Arena, which I, you know, I was there last week watching my daughter perform when I watched the Gophers play Indiana. Maybe it was two weeks ago now. Uh, so that's where it was. So I thought it was at the Target Center. So I would have had to drive on campus, which is across the, you know, the campus is, the campus is on like the Mississippi River. So some of the camp, like my best friend, he works for the U, but he works in the St. Paul where the U is in St. Paul. Um, where Williams Arena is, is technically downtown, well, uh, off of Dinky Town is what they call it. So it's still quite a ride. So, and it, you know, I guess being in Williams Arena, it would have been a little cheaper. And they had good food in Williams Arena. But uh, when it came, it was just one game too. So it was like to go over there, drive, pay to park, buy the tickets, pay to eat, you know, all that shit just adds up. And I'm trying to do shit next week. Uh, Michigan State was the other one that messed me up. I thought it'd be a good uh, good riddle for Michigan State because the West registered at L.A. Magic Johnson would have been their support. Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, like, they start the game and they're handling them. And don't tell me that North Carolina made adjustments because there wasn't no adjustments. <laughs> Not that I saw. They didn't do anything different. But all of a sudden, at the, remember the end of remember the end of the end of the first half, Michigan State started turning the ball over, like dominating them inside. And all of a sudden, they start taking long shots, turning the ball over. I mean, it just it made no sense. You could kind of see, you know, you could kind of see that they was losing on purpose. 
So don't tell me college players now won't lose on purpose because they, they lose on purpose too. So <laughs> what's the worst acting performance of all time? I'm wondering about that. Let's see the worst acting performance of all time. John Voight in Mercy. He won four Oscars, but for his role in Coming Home, however, he's also received a Razzie Award as Worst Actor for Mercy, of depicting the story of a military officer whose hospital is seized by the Irish. Okay, that sounds stupid. Um, Morpheus, Jared Leto. Yeah, it's kind of a weird movie. Oh, this is blasphemy. LeBron was okay. He did a good job. He didn't do any worse than Michael Jordan. Michael Adell. <laughs> this nigga was in a movie. What movie was he in? <laughs> Who's this nigga here? John Travolta. Oh, he could be the frantic and trading paint. Yeah. Donald Trump uh, trading places. You could say he did a oh, fair height 11, nine. Okay. He was in that one. Okay. That, that wasn't acting. He was just being his fucking self. Tom Cruise and the mummy. Uh, yeah. The mummy just wasn't a very good, good movie. Um, the souls America's the secret history of the democratic party. Film was nominated for five good one for worst picture <laughs> documentary. Um, Fifty Shades of Grey, which was stupid. Uh, these, you know, like like you know, chicks would buy like Fifty Shades of Grey was where chicks would buy books to read. You know, soft or or you know, like book writing. You know, you know them romance novels. Fifty Shades of Grey was a romance mo model that they put into a fucking movie. So some bullshit. Look, he looking at zip tie so he can tie the bitch up. You see that? They really zip tie. Like, oh, need to tie you up, bitch. <laughs> Saving Christmas. That sounds stupid. After Earth, I think I dis I'll disagree. This this movie wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad. Um, that's my boy. I don't know that one. Um, Jack and Jill go with it. Oh, where he plays. Look, he wears the dress. See that? He got on the wig and the dress. So he's shamed, you know. We got the Jewish faith dude shaming himself. Dual role twin sibling. So he wore the dress. This the wig is the same as the dress. So get a young man, okay, what we'll, we'll quit said. Don't wear the wig either. <laughs> Unless it's a man unit. If you wear a man unit, and you know what? Lorenzo's on here. You know what, Lorenzo? Should I start doing a fun, like, like you guys help me not get the what's it, Mitsubishi, whatever the fuck that little lawnmower engine is. But should I should I get a fund, but put a GoFundMe for me to get a man unit? You know, should I get a man unit? Because I, I would love to have some finger waves again. I like my own finger waves, but I don't understand. The, the part that scares me is like, they got a, you, you know, when you was a child and you had that glue with the brush and shit, you know, the rubber cement, and you know, you glued shit together. Now they like put the rubber cement on your head and then, you know, then trim it all down and shit. I don't know. That shit seems like it'd be itchy because you see the chicks be smacking their head. So it's got to be itchy. They talk about the shit can last three, four months. Fuck that. How do you wash it? <laughs> uh, two movies. Uh, Killers and Valentine's Day. I don't know that. Um, the Jonas Brothers. 3D Concert. The Love Guru. Yeah, it wasn't a very good movie. Uh, Norbit. You know, he made fun of everybody. Um, yeah, this was another stupid movie. Um, Little Man was stupid. This movie was funny. Deuce Bigelow, American Gigolo. I, it was kind of funny. George Bush was being himself. Jigilly. Daredevil. Worse. <laughs> He's got worse everywhere. I don't remember that movie. Pinocchio, stupid. Freddy Fingered, stupid. Now, I, I don't know if y'all understand what Battlefield Earth is. This is E. Ron Hubbard's movie of the Anunnaki. This is Stinchin's work. This is E. Ron Hubbard getting his puppet, you know, Scientologist John Travolta, and they made a movie about the Anunnaki. A lot of people watch this movie and don't realize it's a movie about the Anunnaki. This is a movie about the Anunnaki. Um... So, worst supporting actor, Barry Pepper. Worst supporting actress, Kelly Preston. Worst screenplay, worst screen couple, and uh, John Travolta and anyone sharing the screen with him and worst original song. <laughs> but this is a movie about the Anunnaki because they got the humans going for the gold. What is this? Uh, Big Daddy, it was stupid. Three movies. Armageddon was stupid. Uh, Mercury Rising and The Siege, all stupid movies. 
The Postman. Uh, the Postman is kind of interesting a little bit. I don't know. Pauly Shore and Tom Arnold. And what was the name of the movie? Biodome. Okay, that shit was stupid. Jury Duty, stupid. Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp was a good movie. Fuck what they talking about. I liked Wyatt Earp. Fuck that. Wyatt Earp was a good movie. Cop and a Half. That sounds stupid. Stopper, My Mom Would Shoot. That was stupid. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves was stupid. The Adventures of Ford Fireline. That was kind of funny. The Final Frontier. People, it was kind of old. Rambo 3. Why? He killed a lot of people in Rambo 3. Damn. This was stupid. Leonard Part 6. They were very stupid. Uh, Prince under uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I ain't been showing y'all Prince under the cherry moon if he would have let Lauren uh, look at this look to make his shoulder he's got the fucking shoulder pads I mean this was a vain ass little man and his be, being a little man made him vain and it fucked up his legs because he wore heels because this man was only 5'2", five, 5'3", five, so he wore heels and look at he wearing shoulder pads and shit ass all out so but I don't know if y'all remember these. Leonard Part 6, Rambo, The Final Frontier. Y'all remember him? So these are some of the movies. Um, where, where did I end up at? Yeah, Under the Cherry Moon. He should have let he should let Morris Day do Under the Cherry Moon. He should have had it in color. It was stupid for not having it in color. Rambo 1, oh, 2, and Rocky 4. I don't know if they were bad. I don't know. Action-packed. This was stupid. Rhinestone was stupid. A Night in Heaven. I don't remember that movie. Lawrence Olivier in China lost over 40, one of the largest financial failures. It was Razzie for worst pitcher. Um, he's playing MacArthur. He's playing MacArthur in this movie and the Korean War. So I don't think it's that bad a movie. Um, the Legend of the Lone Ranger. I don't remember that one. And the last one is Jazz Singer. Who played it? Oh, Neil, Neil Diamond played the Jazz Singer. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell y'all what, though. I'm going to go, when I, when I quit here, I'm going to go down and I'm going to watch uh, Taylor Swift because that shit looks amazing and the sound is great. And, and Little Mermaid, oh, that shit. When you got a good TV, that shit looks so different. It make you only want to watch good shit because <laughs> the shit is so clear and the colors and the sound. <laughs> Uh, I don't know I like that kind of stuff it's this shit I don't like <laughs> oh, so yeah I'm not gonna go too much longer yeah fuck these stories I'm the story well what's this what's that shit uh, Northern Embraces for weekend yeah so I might make a little video about the snow. I'll try to catch some action tomorrow because I really didn't catch any action today. Uh, yeah, so I'll give a little, uh, mo the, the last moments of philosophy. Oh, we got to check out gold. What did gold do today, baby? And even though it's the weekend, it closed on Friday. It's still trading. Oh, it's the dollar. Fuck the dollar. We don't care about the dollar. Here we go. So gold lost another down $24. So gold is at $21,160. And remember, we saw it over $2,200 at one point. We saw it $2,200. So again, you've down. You went here. We saw it. What is this? $184. We saw it $177. Okay. But I think it closed. Because I, I, this is the, 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 the world trading part. But it closed something different in America um, because it never stops trading. You know, trading is, you know, in other countries, the trading is always um, going. But again, you know, anything over $2,000 is not what you paid if you bought gold in the last 10 years. You paid nothing like this. So your gold is still worth a lot. Now, what about silver? Silver, you lost 16 cents. You're up 28 cents on the year, 2484. Uh, one point silver, I want to say hit, what did it hit? Silver hit 25 this year. So it started off at 24, 24. So it's been pretty consistent. The lowest has been in 20, what's this? 22 is what's the lowest. What, 22? Right here, still 20. So I haven't went under 22. 
which is good. And again, this is not, you know, this shit I'm wearing around my neck is not, it's, it's sterling. Sterling is not real uh, what they trade. And as you see, my beloved Ford company is at 12. Um, I needed to get 15 to be three times because I bought in at five. And let's see. So, you know, it's been pretty consistent. Well, we got 1139 is what low it hit. And then it jumped up here to. Oh, okay. I see. It's just a mean. Oh, 18. So we saw the high of 18. And then it le leveled back down to 12. But we did see it go up to 18. And it's been pretty consistent at 24 or 12. So the mean is what? 13, 7. Okay. So as you see, you know, it's just a way to make money. That's all. Um, I, I don't see. What is this hitting? 33. And I mean, if this year you could have got this at 22. You could have got this at 22. And Bitcoin, I think we it's a drop because we saw Bitcoin at, yeah, 71. Uh, so we saw Bitcoin at 71. But look at the year. In the year, you've made 20 grand. And just in a couple of days, you made $68 if you hung in there. And remember, you could have bought Bitcoin for 43 December 24th, 4th. So you see that big jump? 20 grand. So, again, I don't sell this. I just, oh, that's so beautiful. Look, you can see all his beak and the little stuff. Little feathers, just pet the bird. <laughs> oh, just pet the bird. I'm going to get some motherfucking sleep tonight. Um, the news, uh, the new TVs do make you want to watch some. Oh, I'm telling you. When I got that motherfucker first, I, that's all I did was sit there. Because I'm telling you, that Taylor Swift shit looks good. I mean, it is crystal clear. The music is good. And like even the Little Mermaid. was. I'm looking at that shit. I'm like, God damn, they made this look good. Ah. Ah. Well, when I finish this glass, I'm going to be done for the night. Um, I probably, yeah, because the games come on late, you know, so I'll probably be on a little late tomorrow, come on for an hour or so. I ain't got a whole lot to say tonight. Um, Yeah, ain't got a whole lot to say. <laughs> didn't put up all my protection. I see I, I got a crystal here and <laughs> didn't even finish it. I guess I didn't need it. I don't think anything's spiritually attacking me tonight, so that's pretty good. Ah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, just positive, finish with positive things. Like, I ain't beefing with nobody, but I, I want to say this, though. Uh, have you ever watched a soccer game on TV yet? Um, no, nah, not really. Not in a while. Uh, I watched uh, Rock's Rugby the other day, and uh, in the summer I watched Australian Roots football. But no, I haven't watched soccer. But what I like about soccer is a big green field. It's really pretty to watch. But no, I haven't checked soccer out. But yeah, soccer is all green in the stadium. I like the Australian rules football. And then I catch, uh, you know, Australia also does rugby. So you can catch rugby too. So I was catching that, a little bit of both of those. But no, not soccer. And we got a pro soccer team here. We got the Loon. So we got a soccer stadium, a big-ass stadium um, in St. Paul where the loon play. It was funny. These niggas had to play, uh, God damn, it was like 10 above. And some of them niggas is out there in shorts. I'm like shaking my head like, how, how, how? Are you going to lie? Okay, yeah, because it's really green. The field is really green. So I have to check it out. Because uh, pro soccer be on um, um, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Yeah, Amazon TV. Yeah, I think, or Apple TV. It's either Apple TV or Amazon prime one of those has has uh soccer too but yeah i check that out because i like most things I, I love watching tennis that tennis shit is really cool <laughs> it'd be like that ah. i guess i'll finish with this um there really is something that says know thyself i mean you really to be joyful, you really do have to love yourself. And it's like, it's really, 
it's no way to tell you how to do that. There's no nothing to tell you how to do that. It's something that as maturity, you have to learn to accept yourself and, and, and understand, you know, your shortcomings, you know, understand who you are. Don't ignore your shortcomings. Just like don't ignore what you do good. But no, know, know you is my point. And don't ignore, you know, and don't ignore yourself. Know you and know the things that make you joyful. And, and the positive things about you. Because it, it's like too many times there's so much negativity out there to fuck with us. But if you know yourself, you know your worth. And your worth ain't got nothing to do with money. It's it's like, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Wonderful Life shows him like what would happen if he wasn't born. And all the people it affect if you wasn't around. I mean, just think if you wasn't born and your mom and that emptiness of, of her experience with you. And your father too. And, you know, experience with him too, the same way. A lot of melanated community, you know, we have more experiences. You know, a lot of people have more experiences with just their mothers. I was raised with, you know, my stepfather. The majority, you know, from the time I was four until I graduated, I lived with step my stepfather. And I saw my father every week. And I lived with my father in third grade. I spent summers with my grandparents. Mostly my grandmother. My, my grandfather, by that time, he was still going around fucking people. So he would be in and out. Grandpa still was getting his freak on. <laughs> he thought he was the player for Malaysia. <laughs> uh, not being mature. You know, that's that's a lot of what he did and a lot of what my dad did. And it almost destroyed my dad. Fucking around almost destroyed my dad. When his, when his, when his side chick started fucking somebody else, it almost destroyed the nigga. He didn't know how to handle it. And they used to all make fun of him. They was like, uh, he'd go, you know, like he'd go over to see his side chick and the nigga that she was fucking would be leaving. They would pass cars. <laughs> that was the joke. It's like, he'd be going over to see her and the nigga's leaving, you know, because knowing he coming. And, and that's how, you know, a, a scorned woman will come after you if they're scorned for so long, you know. It's like as I celebrate, you know, uh, today, you know, it's, it's past her birthday, so her birthday's over. But it was, you know, a lot of shit this chick did and put me through. Being scorned, you know, because a woman would live with you and still don't like you. And, and that's fucked up. And then you could be the same way. You could you could live with a motherfucking woman and don't really like her. <laughs> uh, let's play Get His Freak Out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, my grandfather, uh, I got a bunch of uh, other uncles. Because <laughs> I used to see this one family, and I'm like, and this was another little town, the town where my step family's, my stepfather's from. And I looked at this family, I'm like, these niggas look a lot like us. I mean, they really did. It's like all the sons kind of look like us. And then uh, he introduced one dude and said that was his uncle, but I don't know if Otis was his son or not. But Otis had a brother that is definitely my grandfather's son. And he's around my age. He's around my age, but he's, you know, definitely my grandfather's son. So, yeah. And my grandmother, my grandmother had shit. My grandmother was pregnant 14, 15 times and had 10 children. Let me see. My dad, Helene, Chris, Christina, Minnie, Joanne, Tawana, Sam, no, Sam is before Tawana. So Sam, Tawana, Vera, no, David, Sam, Tawana, Vera, David, Marie. She had three children died. So what, 14 times? She's pregnant 14 times. She had three. She actually had four children die because one of them got killed by a car when she was three or four years old. Uh, my Aunt Christine uh, got killed at three or four years old. Somebody backed over her. She was playing and they didn't know and they backed up and killed her. Uh, so she had four children die then, but she had three children because she had a pair of twins that died stillborn. She had another stillborn baby, I think. So... 
And then, you know, she lived to in her mid 60s. I think she was 66, 67 when she started. She quit working and started getting dementia. So that just tells you, you know, uh, some people ain't meant not to do nothing. But no, and, and my father seems to be affected. My, my aunt definitely, his twin sister is definitely affected by the same thing. And it appears my father is too. And that's why I wear this shit, you know, because uh, I don't want to see the white. Because <laughs> that's what emptiness is. It's the white. I mean, it really is. It's like when you forget, it's it turns white. That ultimate forgetness is white. And that's fucked up. That's that's even to me scarier than death. Because death is, I mean, it's 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 funny how sudden it is. It's like when you you read all this stuff about uh what the Hindus do, you know, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and all the things that they say you're supposed to do, man, that shit comes so fast that if it's not innate in you, which it kind of is, um, yeah, there's no way you can do all that shit. <laughs> it, death is like, like it's it's really like that. It, the lights turn off really quick. Death is funny. Um, because, how, how do I want to put this? You, like, I, I've, I've probably... I don't know. I've probably died a few times. I, I, I got knocked down by a tree. Um, I flipped in a car. And it's kind of sometimes where I look at some of this shit and it's like, something must have happened. I had a lady shoot at me with a fucking shotgun from, what was that lady, 15 feet away? And if it wasn't me being able to jump inside my apartment, she'd have fucking shot me. And I didn't do nothing to that bitch. So, but it's, it was some times in the last three or four years where that shit came. It's like, whoa. Yeah, that that that, that mysticism shit, it, 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 it's, it's hard to prepare for that. It's hard to prepare. It, it happens so quick. The white, it's funny. The white shit lasts longer. Like, you can see in that light and you're still kind of thinking like, like you're, it's not the same. It's like you're still aware. When you see that light of for, that white of forgetfulness, you're still kind of like aware, but lost aware. Where death, you ain't aware. That shit come, you ain't aware of shit. <laughs> that shit turns off the lights and that shit is instantaneous. You know, it, it, and you go somewhere else. And that's why, you know, you can tell when you're near death and you come back because there is... There's more than this. And death is nothing that, like, like we die each night. That's a fact. And as I said many times, sleep is called the agreeable death. Because technically, you know, not aware, you are what? Not moving. And so sleep is like dying. And you see, we come back from it every time. You know, there are people that are, are horrified of the dark and horrified to sleep. They can't relax, you know, getting into sleep is, you know, for them, not a relaxing time. And so they feel it more than other people feel it because they really feel them dying. And that's what they're afraid of. That's why they don't want to go to sleep because they feel that dying feeling. And so there are people that are afraid to go to sleep. Or want to sleep in the daytime, can't sleep at night because it's too much like dying. So... Nothing to really bother you, though. Um, this ain't the end. And as quick as it comes, if you're allowed to really go into it, because that's that's the little thing. It's, it's a middle plane there, too, that you kind of can teeter around. It ain't fully dumpy into the death trash can. <laughs> but it's nothing to fear. I mean, yeah, it's really nothing to fear. It's natural. They want you to be afraid of it, but... We do it every night. So, you know, it's the same thing. Just go to sleep or if you're about to get hit by a Mack truck, I mean, it's going to put you to sleep eventually. <laughs> so the best way to handle it is just to be cool about it. Oh, uh, what did I see today? I got to tell that. Um, let me see. I sent this to Tony. I thought Shaka Smart was going to get the Michigan job, but they gave his job to... You knew they weren't going to give it to another nigga. They was like, we tried a nigga and he just didn't work. Uh, where is it at? Tony. I sent his name to Tony. So the nigga that got the new basketball job at Michigan is um, Dusty May of Florida Atlantic. Um, they made the tournament this year. Um, and he made the final four last year. 
So Dusty May is go took uh, Jawan Howard's job, which is a major come up for him. Because Florida Atlantic to Michigan, that's a major cut up, come up. And as I said last night, Howard's problem was he could get the big fellas, but he couldn't get guards. He had no one that could recruit good, effective guards. And that's a problem. That's why the big dude who lost to Kansas today, he had him for two years. And yet he could, he was not a good recruiter of guards. And his his time there, he never recruited an outstanding guard. And that's that was his lack every time. And, and, and what did he do after his second year? What did he do? He transferred a bum in. So the first year he didn't have good guards. So the second year he takes a, a transfer, and that dude couldn't play. He was a bum. So that's what took Juwan Howard down is he he could get big dudes, but he couldn't get guards. And so maybe he couldn't relate to guards. And, and if you can't relate to guards or you can't relate to certain type of players, you get people around you that can. And that just shows you the people, his recruiters ain't shit because they could never bring guards in. So that was that was his downfall. And the motherfucker wanted to be too much of a nigga. And he trying to fight other coaches and shit, swinging. You that emotional? How come none of, none of that ever happened when he was when he was uh, coaching uh, in the NBA? That never happened. He coached for the Heat for how long? He he was a coach in the NBA for how long? Never saw him try to jump on people. Now we can't say about his pro career. Maybe he fought in his pro career, but but why is it that you know you you a grown ass nigga in your forties or fifties and you think you got to fight people? And you're a head coach in a national big national program. I mean, how has your mentality not been ghetto all these years? You was affiliated in the NBA, but then you get in college, and all of a sudden you, you, you got the ghetto mentality. Make that make sense to me. Make that kind of thing make sense to me, because it doesn't make sense. So it tells you it's kind of a character. Because remember, it happened more than one time, and so they must have liked that character. Because you just didn't see that same behavior when he was coaching in the NBA. And, and, you know, one motherfucker I hate in the NBA is fucking Pat, um, what's his name, down in down in, um, in, in Miami. I hate that motherfucker. He is one of the foulest owners or presidents. He had Juwan Howard. He had McAdoo. At one time, he had Patrick Ewing. And this nigga hired a video editor. He hired a video editor to be his fucking basketball coach. So he found a puppet that only really won championships because of LeBron. He ain't won shit without LeBron. And they talking about he's one of the hot... No, nigga, you, you didn't win shit without LeBron. So if you was a good coach, you'd have won it again without LeBron. But he didn't, did he? So he was a dude that jumped over a lot again. Bob McAdoo, Patrick Ewing, and Howard. He jumped over all of them. None of them got a chance. So fuck the Miami Heat. And fuck, fuck Pat Riley. Fuck Pat Riley. Now I was coming out, you know, the way LeBron, how he fuck with LeBron. Kind of ran LeBron out of Miami. Because LeBron was like, who are you talking to? So LeBron broke down with that nigga's like, fuck you. <laughs> Thought I had a pill bottle in my pocket. All right. Two hours is enough. I'm not going to go three. Um... Yeah, thank you, Lorenzo. Yeah, Pat Riley. So, uh, I think that's it, y'all. So, this has been the Chocolate... Damn, I didn't... Ah, I fucked up again. This has been the Chocolate Mountain Show. I've been your humble host. Thank you very much for coming. And definitely till we meet again. What should be tomorrow night? 